Well, that was Syed Munir Khasru, the chairman of the Institute for Policy, Advocacy and Governance here at the Enterprise Innovation Summit. Now, one service that helped bring a semblance of normalcy as the lockdowns began was Zoom. While Zoom came in to help us with the new normal, the folks at Zoom are rethinking about the new hybrid. Samir Rajay, the general manager and head of India at Zoom, joins us now. Now, as you listen to Samir, you could also drop by to the stalls and fill in feedback forms. Now, I've been told that there are some great giveaways there. For the moment, let's dive in and uh, listen to Samir Rajay. Thank you, Ashwin. Um, very good afternoon to all uh, the distinguished delegates once again. Uh, I hope you are liking the contents of this edition of uh, EIS 2021. Um, now, before we begin this very interesting session, um, uh, let me just put some interesting data points and statistics uh, for, for all of you. Um, a very recent research by Gartner says that uh, as many as 39% of knowledge workers could possibly leave their jobs if they are insisted on a hard return to fully on-site work. And this is a very astonishing uh, data point for me. Uh, the work trend survey conducted by Edelman Data X Intelligence, which spoke to around 32 full-time employed or self-employed workers across 31 markets uh, between Jan 12th to Jan 25th of this year. Um, that survey says that the hybrid work has become inevitable. Um, business leaders are on the brink of major updates to accommodate what employees want. Uh, the best of both worlds. 66% uh, of the respondents, uh, leaders, said that their company is considering to redesign office space for hybrid, hybrid work. And 73% of employees want flexible remote work option to stay forever. Similarly, I mean, another data point, a very interesting data point coming from Accenture Future of Work Study 2021, uh, which explored what people need to be healthy and productive as we enter a new era of work, 83% workers preferred a hybrid work model, but a variety of factors influence their ability to thrive, whether they are on-site or off-site. And 63% of high growth companies have already adopted a productivity anywhere workforce model. Now we have, we have got no reason to doubt that hybrid work environments uh, offer employees and teams more access to all various models of collaboration. And, and gives them the flexibility to choose when and how they leverage each mode to maximize their contribution. In hybrid working environments, teams can engineer opportunities uh, to collaborate. Um, those, who, uh, those, those that do collaborate intentionally have a stronger awareness of how, where, and when to use each of the, uh, each of the hybrid collaboration models that they are using. However, uh, there are also a few myths surrounding the hybrid workplace model. Uh, you know, for example, pretty soon, uh, people think pretty soon work will go back to normal. That's not going to happen. We need in-person contact to sustain our culture. I don't think we are so rigid. We are quite adaptable. Employees are less productive when working remotely. We have outlined that fact. Hybrid workforce model hurt diversity, equality, and inclusion. I don't think it's a very baseless uh, myth. Um, a hybrid workforce model duplicates our IT infrastructure. No, not at all. It actually optimizes it. Uh, our jobs just can't be done remotely and so on. I mean, uh, these are some of the myths uh, that are built around hybrid work model. So uh, now I will not um, wait further to introduce my guest to talk about how hybrid can work and how are the possibilities stacking up in different sectors we have with us today, uh, Samir Rajay, uh, who's the general manager and head of Zoom Video Communications India. Um, I mean, Zoom is synonym uh, to, to remote work, to collaboration. Uh, there's absolutely no need to introduce the company anymore. Welcome to the EIS 2021, Samir. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much, Rahul, for having, you, having me here. It's a pleasure to meet you and all your esteemed guests. Absolutely, and it's a pleasure to speak to you once again. So uh, as organizations are navigating uh, a new world of hybrid and flexible workplace, uh, technology innovation is supposedly the most 
crucial one for, for employee connection and collaboration. Um, how, does, how does Zoom see this and how has it translated into more innovations uh, from the organization? Absolutely. So, uh, Raul, when you were speaking and giving a preamble, you know, I couldn't uh, help but uh, smile in my mind about one key element, right? Uh, and, and while I will speak about the key element, I think we you spoke about a lot about being hybrid and uh, people evolving, working from home. How is that reflecting? How is the future of work looking like? And uh, the, the element of touch. Well, when it comes to technology, I think it's no different. And the, one of the most key important aspect I would like to say is the human element. What is the human element? Well, why do we need hybrid environment? Why can't we just work at home, be in a silo, be in a cocoon and not come out at all in our lives, right? It doesn't work. We need to have that coffee break. We need to talk to our colleagues. We need to talk to, uh, you know, stand by um, just uh, uh, maybe a coffee machine and bicker about something that's going around or not well or too well in, in our offices, right? That's the element. And let me, let me tell you that collaboration technologies are going to be no different going ahead, right? So it is a period of evolution now, going ahead, how much this virtual world can be made more engaging and can be made more inclusive. And that's what Zoom is focused upon. Now, to give you an insight, like, you know, uh, if, if we talk about the meetings which happened in the virtual world in the last one, one and a half year, you know, we were, okay, people were switching off the camera, switching on the camera and so on and so forth. We're worried about the background and now the time has come people people don't even give a damn anymore about the background, right? It's okay, I'm wearing a shorts and I'm not wearing a proper shirt, but I will still switch on my camera. Those are the days. But how do we translate it in the future? How do we bring the human element? That's key to going ahead. And that's what the technologies uh, are going to look like. And what we are doing at Zoom is we are listening to our customers. Mm -hmm. Customers said that, you know, we want to have more inclusive environment. We want to collaborate from different aspects or different uh, parts of the world uh, and teams are no longer in the same room but want to have the same experience as though they are sitting in the room. Comes virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, similarly, you know, you're, they talk about sharing ideas. Like, you know, I, I don't remember, but there was some time back there, is, there was an idea for an uh, ad called ideating or something like that, right? So people who want to share ideas and do draw, draw on boards and so on, so forth, share things. That's what we are doing. We are listening to our customers and we are bringing those and so many features out. And we recently announced that in Zoomtopia and I can, I can make a list of it for you. Yeah. No, so uh, I think interesting part is that how the technology uh, that, that began with an essential, I mean, as an essential tool is now going to, uh, you know, transform itself and, and, and help that, that, that particular word that you use is, you know, becomes more engaging, becomes more immersive, so that it is it is not used as a substitute and used as an essential tool uh, for productivity, for collaboration, for remote working. I mean, it should it should it should get normalized. Is what my feeling is. So it is it is clear that the traditional conference room uh, will no longer cut the ice as people return to a new hybrid workplace. workplace. But how can businesses invest in, in these innovative technology pieces, innovative technology tools um, to keep the experience of employee at a very high level and to boost it even further in the hybrid model that we are talking about? Absolutely. Uh, you know, again, uh, Raul, if you, if you look at some time back, maybe, you know, even before the COVID started, right, uh, things were quite different. You would see... Uh, you know, huge conference rooms, collaboration rooms uh, built out. And, uh, you know, the moment a CEO or a chairman walks into that room to deliver an all-hands call or deliver an, uh, you know, his board meeting, the IT team would be literally sitting outside with their fingers crossed, oh God, let the, let, the, let the conference go smoothly and I don't want any hiccups, right? So we have moved away from there. And today the stage is where anybody, all the employees, maybe 10,000, maybe 20,000 employees could be in remote area. They could be in, in at their homes. Whereas the chairman CEO could be himself in a, that large video conferencing or a room or even in the amphitheater, right? Mm. Now, if you talk about an amphitheater, itself, the social distancing norm. How can we help that? Now, can the collaboration technology itself help in detecting 
uh, what the social distancing should be between two employees when they are seated in an amphitheater. Yes, Zoom can do that. So that's the evolution of, uh, you know, the collaboration platform itself, whereas the technology team doesn't have to go about searching for, uh, uh, you know, a, a tool, separate tool for everything. Like, for example, like we spoke about video conferencing rooms, you no longer need those high-end, high-definition, uh, you know, hardware setups, you can just bring in a simple device and plug it into, you know, and uh, into into internet and start using Zoom rooms then and there. And the same Zoom room gives you the digital signages feedback, which can be used in, um, you know, social distancing or monitoring the CO2 levels, or even for that matter, hot desk, right? So it's the same collaboration platform, which is getting used all and over. And this is the evolution of technology, which is coming in. And when an IT or a technology leader, CXO, chooses a platform, right? This is what they need to look at, whether it is supporting all devices, whether it is taking care of all the needs, such as chat functions. Uh, is it supporting, uh, uh, you know, uh, the various specific use cases? So ID today needs to be more of an enabler for the business rather than, you know, saying that, hey, this is the tool which we have bought and start using. So it is. it has evolved quite a lot. And that's what uh, we are doing at Zoom to, you know, deliver that seamless experience. No, exactly. I, I completely agree with you when you said that, you know, uh, those jazzy conference rooms um, were were a bane and a pain both at, at some point in time. Uh, the whole IT team ran helter-skelter to just fix whether the video is playing well, whether the audio is playing well. But Zoom has really made a made a remarkable difference I'm as a user as an analyst, as a journalist, I can actually vouch for that. So let's move on. Uh, how is Zoom enabling different sectors? I mean, there must be some customized solutions for different sectors. So for example, financial services, healthcare, education, what are some of those innovations that you would like to uh, speak about? Absolutely. So we work with a lot of uh, industry verticals uh, and, and leaders in these verticals to you know, adopt. Now it could be a simple, evolution of the security platform, security of the platform itself. Like, because if it comes to the financial segment, if you see, they have various security parameters and which are not common across. So for example, it could be a simple thing as restricting the file transfer between two users or, you know, having a only one way chat communication between two users to, uh, you know, uh, where the data resides and so on and so forth. So that's for the financial. So we are doing a lot of stuff in that, and our security, like even for uh, you know for for banking and financial, we recently announced uh, you know um, BYOK, where we last year had in introduced what is known as end-to-end -end encryption, but now we are even giving the flexibility to manage your own keys for your encryption. So a lot of secure organizations have mandate to manage the security by themselves. So we are providing the ability or the functionality this was recently launched. Similarly, when you come to, uh, you know, let's say talk about engineering, uh, engineering or manufacturing plants where they have a lot of ideas to share and designing and so on and so forth to become whiteboarding becomes suddenly critical where you draw something and it needs to be shared uh, and, you know, uh, whatever is being discussed needs to be capitalized or captured straight away from the whiteboard and dumped into uh, your database. So right from uh, new whiteboarding features to integration with uh, SharePoint and Box, uh, you know, those are the features that we are bringing in where uh, these, these can be used. Similarly, for schools and edu education, right? Uh, there could be learning management systems to, uh, uh, you know, even uh, your attendance, uh, simple attendance uh, applications, where you can integrate Zoom directly into those applications. So thereby, we are giving the ability to embed Zoom into the platform. There were no separate reporting and all those things are taken care of, right? So integrations, APIs, in, inbuilt uh, things. Like, for example, now you and I are talking and just imagine you would have a watch. Uh, I could have a watch behind me, uh, which could tell you how much time you have and we have to cover up in this. We have that widget available already. And, and we, we just recently launched uh, something you would love, which is, uh, you know, we have now a transcription available in 30 languages and, uh, you know, uh, live translation into 12 languages coming in uh, next year. So that's that's an amazing stuff. So just imagine if you're in a university or somewhere and you're or even, uh, you know, you're doing a you know, seminar like what uh, our Honorable Prime Minister did um, recently for launching of the COVID app for worldwide community, which happened in Zoom, you know live translation and uh, transcription in various languages, that's, that's the power of collaboration. No, I'm sure, uh, you know, the, the, the 
facts that you are putting on to the table uh, will demystify a lot of facts that that you know um, this collaboration platform is not just about talking to each other. I mean, it is it is a fully enabled stack of technologies that is going to make your organization even more productive. I'm very gungo about it. So recently, uh, there have been many announcements, including uh, those of its latest innovations like Zoom apps, Zoom events. What do these do? Uh, how do they enhance collaboration, productivity, and, and entertainment experience uh, for the hybrid workforce of today? Well, uh, you know, we, we spoke about, uh, you know, some of these features and let me speak a little bit more about the chat function itself. Like, uh, you know, when we, so first and foremost, very few people really use the chat function of Zoom. Uh, they don't know it and the people who know it, they just absolutely love it. So chat function is inbuilt into the Zoom app itself. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're not using it on laptop, I would, I would recommend start using it on laptop and then you know the power of collaboration. So if you're in a meeting, you can actually pull whatever you're chatting over there. Uh, you can start instant meetings from the chat room itself, right? Mm -hmm. And you can have a broadcasting messages going on to all of them. Uh, at the same time. Similarly, when you are in a meeting, whatever you are capturing, you are discussing in the chat, you can bring it back in the chat room. So whoever has missed the meeting actually gets to know what, what happened, right? There is no different minutes of meetings and so on and so forth. Now, similarly on whiteboarding session, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, you can, you have sticky notes plus whatever has been, uh, you know, sketched broad, you capture it and it's there in the chat room it's a, as a repository. And you know what, we are bringing a new feature, which is, uh, you know, going to take away the queue of next slide, please. Uh, you know, if somebody's sharing the slides, uh, you know, it, it's uh, you usually say that, hey, next slide, please. So that's going to take away, we're going to allow multiple controls to multiple people. So, uh, you know, these are these are tons and tons of features. And uh, uh, we spoke about chat, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, cloud integrations with uh, SharePoint, with Box. Uh, we are also bringing in a whole lot of other features like, uh, you know, hybrid teams and smart gallery. Uh, we are also bringing in hot desking, especially for in in, in our Indian scenario, right? Uh, and uh, I would I would say that there was a lot of push from our end, also from India team to bring this, uh, which is uh, you know there is a lot of uh, today's scenario where real estate is scarce. What organizations have started doing is they have started doing hot desk, meaning a set of employees would come to work on X number of days, Y number of employees would come on other days and so on and so forth, right? So just imagine you have a dedicated uh, machine out there, you just scan your QR code and you just log in over there and the machine becomes belongs to you for the day. No data resides over it. It's on your PC everywhere at the back end. So those are the things that we are doing. We are, we are listening to people. We are working at the ground level so that whatever feedback is coming, people have reduced their office sizes. They said, hot desking is very important for us. What can you do about it? Here it is, it's coming up. Yeah, so just just uh, on a lighter note, the real estate companies won't like Zoom at all. <laughs> but yeah, you know, on the hindsight, the the power of technology is actually so um, so uh, visible all over the place that it will it will really help shape up the the future organizations. Lastly, I have I have a couple of minutes left, Samir. So lastly, I would like to uh, touch upon some challenges with regards to data privacy and data encryption. Uh, a lot has already been done by Zoom. Uh, what more can we expect uh, from Zoom in these two uh, areas? Well, absolutely, right? I mean, for us, security is something which is very close to our heart. I, I still don't, I don't know of a company which did a feature freeze for 90 days and just focused on security, security, and security, right? So probably we will be remembered for that and we continue to build on it. So last year we had acquired a company uh, and uh, which is which specialized in end-to-end -end encryptions. We launched launched end-to-end -end encryptions, and today we are now uh, in Zoomtopia. We announced the launch of uh, you know BYOK as I mentioned, where we are giving the ability to certain organizations who who ha who need to manage their own keys. So we are bringing in that. Similarly, we are bringing an end-to-end -end encryption for a Zoom phone, which is yet to be launched in India, by the way. But uh, you know, we are bringing an end-to-end -end encryption on that as well. So security continues to uh, you know be top of everything that we do. Be it uh, you know adding new features, be it new functions or new products itself. So be it the simplest form of uh, you know enhancing the uh, password protections to end-to-end -end encryptions and so on and so forth. So everything that we do revolves around security. Not data privacy, on the other hand, is slightly different. Data privacy is something, uh, you know, I would say a, a lot of companies and, and we in India have 
very simple disregard to right but zoom at zoom privacy is something very critical first and foremost we don't have any data of yours if you're a paid customer what we have is your email address your billing address uh, and and uh, yeah, and your payment details so that's that's about it. if you're premium user we don't even have that we all we have is a email address and uh, I mean, name so if you choose to you know record at our end of course it is encrypted and it is uh, you know on on the, one of the secured servers and so on so if you chose you have the ability as i said for financial sector if they choose you don't even store anything at so if you don't store anything on our servers well we don't have anything no it's it's all on your end so privacy is very close uh, and so is data security we, we, we treat both as separate pillars and we have specific teams focused on it uh, who continue to monitor this uh, all time. Great. Uh, so I think that was the crux of uh, our conversation uh, uh, with Samir. And uh, you, know, you will realize that how in the past two, I mean, especially in the past two years, this platform has evolved and is going to help you when you are, when you are kind of coining your um, hybrid workplace and how you can utilize and exploit the features of, of Zoom platform. Thank you very much, Samir, for talking to us. Thank you, Rob.